Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Yet another round of this first week of the group pulls of the Victory Road World Cup sponsored by Elgato, GG Tour, and Medify. My name is Gabby Snyder, and I'm joined here by Maeve O'Rourke as we're going to be taking you through this very exciting matchup between Luxembourg and Finland for the next round. Yeah, I'm psyched to be back on the mic with you again, Gabby. We had a lot of fun in last year's World Cup. And like I got to do earlier in the first match of the day, we now get to look at another new team for the World Cup in Luxembourg. So I'm really excited to see how they do, especially because we got to see, I think, a really interesting team build from Jordan Diddy of Jamaica in the first game we featured today. But last round with you, Gabby, you got to use one of your favorite phrases in Pokemon commentary of a revolving door of Pokemon. And that definitely was a match that was very switch heavy. Yeah, I, I'm glad you picked up on that. <laughs> I've been able to work it into my Go commentary as well, which is pretty <laughs> exciting. But, you know, I, I do want to take a moment to say I'm really happy to be back on the mic with you as well, Maeve. And um, I think you've gotten a lot more new plushies since the last time we commentated together. So if nobody's brought that up yet, I just wanted to put it out there and say I appreciate it. My wallet has brought it up. But uh, beyond okay. that, thank you very much. <laughs> same, same. I let's, let's not talk about um, what's going to happen when I get to shop at Worlds. Hopefully, maybe. We'll see. Anyways, uh, <laughs> moving on to this next matchup. Again, this will be uh, Luxembourg versus Finland. Uh, Cyprian Shepens versus Lumi Yahemo. Um, both these trainers relatively new onto the scene. Lumi getting top eight at the Hatterene series back in 2021. So I, I think that was also a tournament that you and I commentated together, come to think of it. Actually, the Hatterene Series 1 was the one that I played, interestingly enough. I don't believe I played oh. Lumi, but I do remember them doing incredibly well in the Hatterene Series. And that is the first one, I think, was probably one of the tougher ones because that was the only tournament that we had that was in, God, I believe it was Series 6, where there were the restricted Pokemon uh, based on the top 10 usage. So that's a really fun format to see Lumi have had some success in. Yeah, but talking about restricted Pokemon, mm. uh, they're back um, <laughs> compared to Series 6. Uh, we have a really interesting matchup, though, because while Lumi's running a team that looks very similar to what Christian was just running in the last round, uh, Cyprian's running a Dialga and Kyogre team, which, while I have seen a few trainers use it, you know, I think Dialga is definitely one of the least used restricted Pokemon out of the list of them all at this point in time. Yeah, and it always is really interesting to me as well because it has a pretty decent Zacian matchup just thanks to that steel typing. It definitely helps out a bit. Uh, it's just one of those Pokemon that as a restricted, you'll see it more in Trick Room based teams, but the format at this current point is not as Trick Room heavy as it was, I'd say, about two months ago. Uh, so it's interesting to see these players, you know, bring something Trick Room more Trick Room based uh, as we near Worlds, because as you and I both know, Trick Room comes in cycles throughout a season and uh, throughout the format. But Porygon 2 is a Pokemon that we are very familiar with. If you have watched VGC really ever, uh, you will see Porygon 2. It's just so bulky, so good at setting Trick Room, pretty pesky to deal with, and even paired with a Landorus as well, who is another Pokemon that we see kind of you know, we've seen a lot more as of recent. I feel like it had a pretty good use at Nationals, uh, NAIC this season. Um, but like you said, that last game, Lumi running that team that Christian was running, Charizard has been a threat since Dallas of 2020. Uh, I don't see it stopping anytime soon having access to such a powerful Gigantamax form. No, I, I think, though, in this matchup against Cyprian, Lumi has to leave that Charizard behind. Mm -hmm. You know, the one Pokemon that we didn't see in Christian versus Toma was that Lunala. But I think in this matchup, you almost have to bring it. Uh, Lunala is the only Pokemon that uh, Lumi has on their side of the field that could potentially have access to Trick Room. And when your opponent just leads the Dialga <laughs> and Porygon 2 outright, you know they're got to be thinking about it at that point. Absolutely. The Porygon and Dialga, like you said, are the leads for Cyprian. However, Lumi leads the Groudon and the Grimmsnarl. So again, a lead that I feel like you guys have looked at a little bit today. Grimmsnarl bringing a lot of great utility, especially if you're trying to work through Trick Room. But thankfully for Lumi, those are two of the slower Pokemon on the team if need be. Yeah, and if this Grimmsnarl is similar to the one that we saw last round as well, it'll probably be running Trick and Iron Ball. And the interesting thing about Iron Ball is that it actually benefits you when Trick Room is set up on the field, as it 
halves your speed rather than just dropping you down to the smallest or the slowest priority tier like Lagging Tail does. So uh, this could be a really interesting start for Lumi. You know, I think they have a potential to do some really big damage this turn with a Precipice Blade supported by something else. But uh, Cyprian has the ability to essentially get Trick Room up unthreatened, assuming that Grimmsnarl doesn't have Taunt, which at this point in time, a majority of them aren't bringing. Correct. They are not typically running it, oftentimes seeing that trick variant. However, Dialga is going for the Dynamax right out of the gate on turn one, putting on a lot of pressure thanks to its partner Pokemon Porygon. However, we will be seeing the light screen coming up from the Grimmsnarl first to mitigate some of the damage coming out from Cyprian's side of the field. There is a max steel spike going out into the Grimmsnarl from the Dialga. <laughs> is enough for a full one hit knockout there, not even a big deal. Thanks to typically what they are running uh, with that flash cannon. So a huge, powerful move gets that important boost as well uh, to that defense stat as well. It's showing it's the life orb variant of the Dialga and the Groudon here goes for a sword stance, interestingly enough. So getting that boost when it was not targeted, letting that Grimmsnarl take the fall for it. Porygon goes for the trick room though to change the speeds. Yeah, knowing that the Grimmsnarl did set up light screen this turn, it had to have been life orb or a critical hit to knock it out in one hit from that max steel spike. So even though Cyprian does get the Pokemon advantage earlier on, we do see that Groudon is actually slower than the Dialga. And now that it's at plus two attack, uh, those Prespice Blades or possibly even Max Quakes are really going to hurt. Uh, Lumi does have an interesting decision to make this turn between whether or not they want to keep Trick Room up on the field for a longer period of time, um, or if they're if they're worried about, um, you know, if they're not worried about Trick Room though, they can keep the speeds as is, and that Lunala can start going straight for damage via Moon Geist Beam or some of the other attacks that it's known to bring in this metagame. So uh, even though Cyprian got the first Dynamax and got the first knockout of this game, uh, because of how the field has pivoted and because that Groudon is critically slower than the Dialga, uh, it's definitely the Pokemon to keep an eye out for in turn two. Landorus switches in for that Porygon too, trying to take advantage of this Trick Room while Lumi goes for the Dynamax with their Groudon now at only plus one, thanks to the Intimidate from the Landorus on Cyprian's side of the field. And the Lunala also was the switch in for that Grimmsnarl slot. So Lunala possibly has a good chance to go. Actually, interesting here, there is going to be a Max Quake does not affect the Landorus. Landorus able to, uh, thanks to its flying type, not deal with that Max move. Another Max Steel Spike goes into the Lunala here, thanks to that Shadow Shield. Doesn't do as much damage as it normally would, but could do more damage on that next turn. Gets another boost as well to the defense here. And then the Meteor Beam from the Lunala, that is going to charge up on this turn, get that special attack boost. And so long as it hits, because it does have a chance to miss, uh, we'll be able to put out some really nice damage here. Thank you. Thanks to that power herb as well, allowing it to use on one turn. The meteor beam does connect. You're going to be able to inflict some huge damage onto this Landorus who switched in. Does bring it down to only 30 HP left, just under a quarter, but you know, not getting your max move off is huge. Lumi indicating by that targeting that they really did not want that Porygon 2 to stick around for a long time on the field. And that's a bit of an interesting prioritization, uh, given that the Dialga, you know, it is a bulky Pokemon, especially when it has that Dynamax form on its side. Um, but it is the Pokemon that is going to be dealing more damage at this point in time. You know, we know that the Porygon 2 has Trick Room, probably has Recover. Uh, but the fact that we don't really know those other two moves quite yet makes that a really interesting target for Lumi, possibly indicating that they don't really have anything to attack this Porygon 2 moving forwards. Yeah, Lunala protects here, not trying to take any damage. However, the max Rockfall will come out from that Groudon into the Porygon 2 slot, does almost 50% of its HP and will set up the sand here. Will not affect that Dialga but all uh, or the Groudon, but the other Pokemon will start taking that residual chip damage. However, another a max Quake here from the Dialga goes into the Groudon slot on Lumi's side of the field. Doesn't do that much damage, about a quarter, per a quarter of its Dynamax HP, but does get that special defense boost as well. Well, which can be super helpful for that Porygon on the field, especially if it takes any sort of, uh, you know, won't be taking a Moongeist Beam, but if it takes any sort of special attacks from the Pokemon that Lumi has, including maybe something like um, if it's running a uh, that uh, Venusaur in the back is that fourth Pokemon that we haven't really seen yet. Yeah, I think we got a good indication of what Groudon's holding as well, given that, yes, there is a Reflect on the field, but both those Pokemon were Dynamaxed, and that just, that Earth Power, or Max Earthquake just 
did not do much damage at all, uh, possibly indicating that the Groudon is holding an Assault Vest. So while Cyprian is getting some amazing information in this game one, I, I don't quite think they brought the tools with them to uh, have a Pokemon advantage, just given how these uh, speed tiers are shaking up. You know, it's great that the Lunala will be moving last at, relative to all these Pokemon, and it's also great that it looks like this Porygon 2 is probably running Foul Play and Eerie Impulse. Uh, so, you know, again, it will be able to deal damage to this Lunala super effectively for the knockout, but um, this Groudon is going to be a huge threat for Cyprian to take care of, and without that Kyogre and without the speed advantage, it's going to be a really tough ask. Yeah, that foul play from the Porygon was actually able to get the knockout onto that Lunala thanks to a critical hit. The Max Quake, though, onto the Porygon is able to get that knockout in return. Also, we do know, Gabby, that that Groudon is not a Salt Fest because it used Sword Stance in turn right. one. Draco Meteor will be the move of choice from Dialga, though, into this Dynamax Groudon. Once again, not a ton of damage going on and a little bit more Life Orb chip as we move on. And now Cyprian has a very low health Landorus and only one Pokemon left. That last Pokemon looks like it's going to be Kyogre, but again, with Trick Room up on the field and with this Groudon so slow, it's tough to say how this is going to shake out. Uh, Lumi's last Pokemon is also going to be Venusaur, so quite an interesting predicament here. Uh, Venusaur will not have access to the sun unless Lumi decides to switch that Groudon in and out to reset it on the field, uh, but possibly you might not need it at this point in time. Um, I, I guess you can't really switch as you are down to your last two Pokemon, but uh, still, as long as Groudon's able to continue to deal damage here, and it is still at plus one attack as it's only been intimidated once, I believe, by that Landorus. Um, it's really Groudon's game to win at this point in time. So Cyprian, if he wants to try and find an advantage here, he has to switch in that Landorus and he has to go for uh, probably Origin Pulse because Kyogre is going to be taking damage at the start of this turn. Uh, if he's able to stall out his own Trick Room, that might be another way around things, but then Venusaur can just go for Leaf Storm or whatever Grass-type <laughs> attack it has. So a uh, really tough position for him to be in, Lumi just having the right tools needed to capitalize on Trick Room throughout this game one. Yeah, Landorus comes in for the Dialga there, gets an Intimidate off onto the Groudon, bringing it down to neutral. Kyogre goes for the Protect here, trying to not take that much damage. However, Venusaur goes for, I believe what that was, the Leaf Storm and did not uh, go through that Protect. However, there is going to be a Precipice Blades into the Protect that also will not hit the Landorus, so Landorus able to come in for free here. And Landorus will get the opportunity to attack now that Trick Room has ended, which is a great opportunity for Cyprian, but still really going to struggle against these two Pokemon if that Kyogre is unable to uh, deal damage. So it looks like uh, Groudon will be protecting this turn while the Landorus goes for a fly. So uh, Venusaur could really do some damage right now. Yeah, and the Water Pulse coming out from the Kyogre into only the Venusaur slot thanks to that Protect from the Groudon. Doesn't do as much damage as I'm sure that Cyprian would have liked to see. However, a Fly will continue to do more. The Leaf Storm here actually, oh, I'm sorry, that is Frenzy Plant, I believe, into the Kyogre. Brings it down to just 14 HP. Does a ton of damage and you're only going to be able to possibly use Origin Pulse going forward. Does confirm that Venusaur is slower than that Kyogre, though, without the sun, so that's really, really good information for both Cyprian and Lumi going into this game, too. I think Cyprian has to start thinking of adjustments, and I don't think you necessarily bring Trick Room to this game, too. Uh, Fly is able to pick up the knockout on the Landorus, and Groudon should probably be knocked out by this Origin Pulse if it's allowed to connect, so... Um, even though Cyprian did manage to win this game at the end of it, um, it was a really, it felt like it was a really uphill battle as he did not have speed control throughout that entire match uh, due to the fact that Lumi's Pokemon were all just naturally slower. Yeah, and one thing I think as well for Cyprian, I, we thought I think a little bit more uphill because that Diago wasn't putting on the offensive pressure that I feel like I expected of it. You know, all of the moves that it was, you know, it was putting out a lot of damage in terms of like Dynamax moves, but still not even as much as maybe if you see a Dynamax Kyogre and it goes for a Max Geyser and you can typically do a bit more damage. The boosts were very helpful, the two Max uh, Steel Spikes and the one Max Quake, but Again, sometimes you look at a Max Restricted that Dynamax is with a Life Orb and you're like, I expected a little bit more damage here. 
Yeah, Lumi did a fantastic job of utilizing Max Quake, I think, to just shut that Dialga down overall. Um, in the end, it didn't really matter as much as Groudon, even with all those boosts, was able to just fall to the Kyogre. Uh, going into game two, you know, I really do like how Cyprian kept that Kyogre in the back of his party for that reason. Uh, you really don't want Kyogre to take the field until you know that it's going to be able to go for those water spouts unthreatened. As, as soon as you start clicking Origin Pulse, you know, you start running the risk that things are going to go very poorly for you. Uh, so going into game two, you know, I think the adjustments I'd like to see is Cyprian probably leaving the trick room behind. Uh, maybe you still bring Porygon 2 because that did apply a ton of offensive pressure knowing that it's the foul play variant and knowing that that Groudon was going for sword stance as well. Uh, but if you don't set up trick room for your opponent, then you are going to have the speed advantage or they're going to be forced to trick room with that Lunala if it does indeed have it, which... Uh, would be a turn that it's unable to attack. So I think Cyprian has a lot of options available to him. That's what's so interesting about these Trick Room heavy teams now that we're later on in Series 12. Because you're able to find out your opponent's strategy for dealing with Trick Room in Game 1, it makes it very easy to adapt in Game 2 because there's only so many plays that your opponent can make throughout the game. And speaking of adaptations for game two, Lumi leads the Venusaur Lunala, while Cyprian leads the Dialga and Kyogre. So a double restricted lead from Cyprian, trying to put on a lot of pressure early. Venusaur, once again, we saw, like you said, it was slower than the Kyogre. Um, so it may need the help of its partner Pokemon Groudon to get its speed up. But that's a switch that can be easily called by Cyprian here. Um, obviously, whether or not your opponent commits to it is something you do have to worry about. But if you're able to make a play that, uh, you know, maybe gives you an advantage if that Groudon does come in, but also doesn't necessarily ruin things if the Groudon doesn't come in. Um, I, I think that, you know, having Kyogre and Dialga side by side is definitely the way to do that early on in this game. On Lumi's side of the field, you know, yes, you don't necessarily have to worry about Trick Room with this lead, as Dialga, if it's anything like Game 1, will probably prefer to Dynamax. Um, but again, this is a very uh, predictable play here, going for the switch to get Sun up. And uh, as a result, I'm curious to see how Cyprian's going to adjust. Porygon 2 can certainly take a uh, G-Max Vine Lash way better than that Kyogre can. <laughs> oh, I think it Absolutely. copied Chlorophyll, too. <laughs> oh my goodness, that would actually be crazy. Oh yeah, and it was because we saw that it copied from the Groudon as well, I believe. However, there is a Gigantamax with this Venusaur right out of the gate. I'm gonna be able to move pretty quickly here, but it may not want to take something like a Max Quake in return from the Dialga on Cyprian's side of the field. And you're not going for something like a Sleep Powder to maybe stop Trick Room coming from maybe Cyprian's Porygon or maybe the Dialga, but probably most likely not as it is also going for a Dynamax of its own. Trying to put out once again more damage, get some more boosts, maybe help its partner Pokemon Porygon uh, from getting knocked out so easily, bulk it up so that I can go for things like Recover and even Foul Play because you know that that Lunala is now in the back for Lumi. Uh, instead, though, there is going to be a G-Max Vine Lash from this Venusaur into the Porygon 2 slot. Does do a pretty decent chunk of damage, uh, even though Porygon can be so incredibly bulky. A G-Max, a uh, Max Quake here from the Dialga into that Venusaur spot does a pretty decent chunk as well, about 30% of the HP of that Venusaur, and does get that special defense boost that can be pretty helpful, especially with that uh, Lunala in the back if it goes for something like a Moongeist Beam onto that Dialga. Uh, Groudon and Porygon, though, not going to be moving this turn. No, and Porygon, you really don't want Porygon 2 to get defense boost in any way, shape, or form, as it's already so bulky, and it's arguably the only Pokemon that has consistent access to recovery in the Series 12 metagame. So, uh, depending on what Cyprian is more afraid of at this point in time, you know, he could boost up the defense or the special defense of that Porygon 2 and just try and situate it in a spot where it's able to stay on the field. Um, going for the switch into the Landorus instead here, uh, I think that's a good call as it will ensure that the Groudon's attacks aren't going to do too much damage to this Dialga. But, you know, knowing that Venusaur is the Gigantamax Pokemon of choice for Lumi in this game, I, I feel like uh, there's really only so much that Dialga can do. I, I don't think you necessarily are worried about Groudon, at least for the time being. Yeah, Max Quake does pick the correct target from this Venusaur, goes into the Dialga instead of that Landorus that switched in, boosting that special defense for both of the Pokemon on Lumi's side. However, a Max Steel Spike into the Venusaur from the Dialga does a good chunk of damage there, really nice amount of damage, but most importantly gets a defense boost as well, which would have been great for that partner Pokemon Porygon. However, I feel like all these Pokemon still, uh, uh, still benefit from having 
that ability to get their defense boosted. A Precipice Blades only goes into the Dialga here, and then both of these Pokemon will take some more residual damage thanks to that Vine Lash. And I really like how Lumi adapted that uh, with their strategy in this game too, as the residual damage is making it a lot easier to pick up the knockout on this Dialga. A Dialga really only has two or three turns left on the field, depending on Lumi's targeting in this turn. Uh, we know that Dialga should take another Max Quake and uh, possibly even another Precipice Blade, so I think it might be too low health to do that. Um, so really by just having enough bulk and to whittle it down via G-Max Vine Lash goes to show why Pokemon like Charizard and Venusaur are just so common right now in Series 12. Venusaur goes for the Max Guard while Landorus goes for a Sword Dance. A Max, uh, a Max Dragon type move into the Venusaur goes into that Max Guard and the Precipice Blades only connects once again onto that Diago who is able to hang on through that Precipice Blades as it did not take any damage from the Venusaur. Yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, Max Wormwind didn't connect mm. with the Venusaur, as that would have been essentially another Intimidate down on that Groudon, and uh, more pressure for Lumi to switch it off the field and lose the special defense boost from the Max Quake a couple turns ago. But, you know, overall, I still think that Dialga got the best use of its Dynamax possible. Uh, will be knocked out this turn regardless of what happens, given that G-Max Vine Lash damage will still be around uh, at this point in time. Uh, but Lander is more than capable, I think, of doing the damage needed at this point in time via a fly, via an earthquake, maybe a rock slide, uh, really whatever move that uh, Cyprian sees fit. Unfortunately, though, Sleep Powder <laughs> will be putting it asleep. Yeah, that sleep powder thanks to the sun. Landorus cannot wake up, takes its turn of sleep. I believe Cyprian wanted his own Dialga to go out on his own terms with an earthquake there, but the Draco Meteor instead into the Venusaur spot will be enough to get the knockout, but not out until after it gets that really important sleep powder. And the, uh, the Dialga here, thanks to that life orb, I believe still is going to be able to go out on its own terms. Thanks to that life orb chip damage, not going to take anything from that G-Max Vine Lash. However, Groudon goes for a Precipice Blade, it's not going to connect into that Landorus thanks to its flying type. A great use of Sleep Powder, and that's why so many Venusaur will run <laughs> it as the fourth move. You get access to Max Guard when you're gig in your Gigantamax form, uh, but once you're back to your normal size, having the ability to put a Pokemon to sleep really can make or break your strategy. I do like how Cyprian uh, handled targeting that turn, as by going for what I believe was an Earthquake and a Draco Meteor into the Venusaur, it meant that he was guaranteed the knockout. Uh, so that does mean that, you know, if the Sleep Powder had missed, or let's say had the Sleep Powder targeted the Dialga, the Venusaur would still be gone. Um, and overall, setting up this Kyogre for a great opportunity to deal some big damage this turn. Uh, we'll have to worry about the threat of a Fake Out from the Incineroar, uh, but as long as you're able to sort of protect yourself from the possible Groudon switch out and back in to remove weather, um, I think that uh, Cyprian is definitely in a comfortable position as we start to enter the end game. Groudon is going to switch out here, not liking the look of a Kyogre in rain. Brings out that Lunala that we saw right in turn one. Still at full health, Kyogre goes for the Protect here, not trying to take any damage from that Fake Out, most importantly getting flinched. However, that Fake Out once again goes into the Kyogre, no real issue there. Landorus takes another turn of sleep, but honestly a huge turn for Cyprian because it feels like a free way to burn off a sleep turn. Yeah, I think that Cyprian probably should have opted for a switch there instead of the Protect on the Kyogre if he's worried about the weather control going into the finale of this game. Uh, the one thing that I think you have to worry about, especially when your opponent has Incineroar and Groudon side by side, is just that those two Pokemon have great synergy together. You know, Kyogre can knock out both of them in the same turn easily, but if your opponent's able to get weather control, then you're really going to struggle to maintain that advantage, and, you know, Flare Blitz in the Sun will still deal damage to Kyogre. Uh, so definitely has to be careful about the possible uh, switch in of the Groudon here. Um, if this Landorus wakes up, maybe it won't be as threatening, but uh, still, the sun's really going to weaken the water type attacks that Kyogre has to throw out right now. Yeah, Kyogre again, not loving the whole thing. Landorus takes another turn of sleep. That is three sleep turns there. A meteor beam from this Lunala gets that charge up thanks to that power herb. Only taking one turn, getting that special attack boost as well. So going to be able to act now and, you know, having that special attack boost can be huge, especially with that beam attack. However, I do believe it misses and the water spout instead goes into the ground on does a ton of damage, even with the rain. So an absolutely huge miss with the meteor beam and Lunala. Groudon revealing its item is actually going to be that citrus berry. So 
Interesting turn, I think, Gabby. A lot of uh, a lot of things we weren't expecting. Yeah, that miss is really unfortunate for Lumi, as I'm pretty sure the Meteor Beam with the special attack boost would have knocked out the Landorus. It also would have definitely weakened the Water Spout coming out from the Kyogre. Um, but now we're at the range where Landorus should be able to wake up this turn. Um, it's been four turns. This is This is when the Sleep Timer will typically run out on Pokemon. And as a result, if he's able to um, go for some damage here, maybe try and uh, do enough chip to get it so that Lunala will be knocked out by a second Water Spout, assuming that Kyogre doesn't take any damage this turn, uh, he should be in a pretty comfortable spot. But Lumi, you know, playing to their end game quite comfortably, ensuring that they'll have the weather advantage throughout the match, I think that's definitely their win condition at this point in time. Yeah, a Protect from the Kyogre. Lander is finally waking up, goes for that Earthquake. Not going to hit its partner Pokemon Kyogre, but will do some great damage into both of these Pokemon. Incineroar eats its Shookaberry here to weaken some of that damage, but no Shadow Shield for Lunala, so it takes the full brunt and a bit, a nice chunk to that Incineroar as well. Moongeist Beam from the Lunala goes into the Kyogre. Does not connect thanks to that Protect, but you're still getting a lot of Intimidates down onto this Landorus. Yeah, it's a tough call for Cyprian to make here because I think he does have to switch something out this turn, but it all comes down to prioritization. Do you want to prioritize getting Drizzle back up on the field or do you want to prioritize having access to a second Intimidate but also dropping the Intimidates on, uh, you know, the Landorus on your side of the field? I think personally I would favor the Weather War here. I think that having Rain up on the field is quite frankly more valuable than having an Unintimidate. Landorus at this point in time, because even though those earthquakes aren't at full power, uh, Landorus is still dealing some damage, and at this point in time, you don't need to be getting the knockouts with Landorus, you just need to be setting it up so that the Kyogre can come in and knock out with either a Origin Pulse or a Water Spout boosted by the rain. Fake out from the Incineroar goes into the Landorus, not going to be able to move this turn while Kyogre swapped out for that Porygon. So, like you said, prioritizing the uh, weather here while a Moongeist Beam from the Lunala will go into the Landorus and do a really enough damage for that knockout so that Kyogre will be forced to switch back in and get the weather up. However, there is still the Groudon in the back for Lumi. Yeah, Lumi making the correct call that the Porygon 2 would be coming in in the Kyogre's spot on the field and not the Landorus' spot. So going for that damage there and securing the knockout. Uh, the nice thing for Cyprian is that even though he will lose the weather uh, advantage at this point in time, the foul play into the Lunala without Shadow Shield is more than enough damage to knock out. So as long, again, as long as this Kyogre is able to stay relatively healthy this turn, um, and be able to deal some consistent damage. We know Kyogre has the speed advantage, and we know that this Porygon 2 uh, is also capable of providing some great support for it right now. So uh, Cyprian does still have the momentum going into this end game. I think if Lumi wants to try and turn it around, they have to send in that Groudon, and they have to uh, get a lot of damage down very, very quickly, possibly focusing in on that Porygon 2, which um, otherwise is going to really just be unthreatened by these Pokemon right now. Origin Pulse from the Kyogre into both of these Pokemon does connect, and that is enough for a knockout on both the Incineroar and the Lunala. Porygon here is going to be able to do kind of whatever it wants. The only thing that would really help maybe being a recovery, a recover, or even a Trick Room if it chooses to go for it. However, it, um, whatever it went for is not able to go into either Pokemon, so it did go for an attacking move that turn. Yeah, I think that was foul play to cover yeah, uh, either the Groudon coming in or just dealing damage to that Lunala. I mean, it was a bit of a toss up whether or not the Kyogre was faster than the Lunala, as it really does depend on how those Pokemon are trained. Uh, but in this case, now we know that Kyogre was faster and uh, was able to get that knock. So uh, again, really well played from Cyprian. I think just showcasing the uh, incredible flexibility of this team, uh, being able to uh, really handle this well against Lumi without Trick Room just after noticing the speed tiers in game one. Yeah, and able to get that knockout with that water spout, even with the sun up, because that Kyogre was able to stay at full health pretty much that entire game. You know, it did not take any damage that would have mitigated the output of that water spout and force uh, Cyprian to possibly rely on using Origin Pulse like it used in that second to last turn, which as we've seen with uh, accuracy in that set, it always feels a little shaky to press something after you see your opponent, but have uh, rough accuracy because then you're like, what if it also happens to me? And, you know, I got this one step up because I was able to avoid this one move. But really interesting, I think, from Cyprian.
Yeah, that meteor beam miss was really unfortunate, and it's tough to say how much of a difference that would have made in that match. Um, given it had it connected with the Landorus, and also Landorus had the four turn sleep, I think that the match would have definitely gone in Lumi's favor. However, if it's if this Kyogre is trained like a lot of the other Kyogre are trained right now, um, it probably was holding Mystic Water, and you basically go for the Origin Pulse instead of Water Spout, assuming that you're going to be below half your health, because that's the point when you start to deal more damage with that move. So uh, Cyprian just knowing his outs, knowing the matchup very comfortably, and... Um, I, I think that Lumi did a very good job playing with their team. It was just very unfortunate that uh, as soon as the speed was revealed, you know, the, the win conditions were basically written down for uh, Cyprian. Yeah, and actually really nice as well. That does tie Luxembourg and Finland both at two wins this week. So very, shaping up to be a really interesting kind of final for both these teams because you can end in a tie during this stage. Uh, in the future stages moving on, you cannot. However, if these teams tie at four and four, uh, you know, they still get they still get some points and uh, have a better chance of moving on. But really well played by both of these trainers. Really interesting, again, for me to be able to look at two players from two brand new teams in the World Cup in both Jamaica and Luxembourg and uh, see kind of how both of these trainers approach uh, a competition on such a scale as the World Cup. Yeah, it's been really exciting so far. And I think this last match we have for the day as well is going to be super exciting. So y'all don't want to go anywhere. Uh, again, this Tree Road World Cup sponsored by Elgato, Medify, and GG Tour. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. 